Good morning and welcome. I am Mike Howard, Chair of the Board of Directors of United Way of Greater Stark County. Thank you for being with us, with us this morning as we kick off our 2021 annual fundraising campaign. Your support of this campaign is vital to our efforts toward reducing childhood poverty, which is at a crisis level in our community. When I was serving as a judge at Stark County Family Court, childhood poverty was a concern for us because it is a risk factor that increases the likelihood of delinquent behavior. In fact, in a 2015 study that tracked a group of kids over 10 years, they repeatedly cycled in and out of child poverty. The researchers found that the kids were more likely to engage in delinquent behavior when they were in poverty than when they were not. This morning, we will hear from some of our community leaders about this urgent issue and how it impacts all of us. Now more than ever, it is time for us to come together and to make a difference in the lives of children and families right here in our community. Your host this morning is Mike Alina, Vice President of Communications and Community Outreach at All Care. Mike will be moderating our panel discussion on the implications of childhood poverty and children's education and how we can all work together to find solutions. Mike. Well, good morning, everyone. And thank you, Judge Howard, for that kickoff. And it gives me a chance to share gratitude in an even more magnified way to all the folks at United Way for turning this morning into a great morning with all the uncertainty that was leading up to this happening. So right out of the gate, great job by Maria and her team. And I'm very honored to be a part of facilitation with regard to a conversation around childhood poverty and really early childhood development. And as you were looking at the screen this morning, waiting for all of us to get on, you probably saw a hand and that hand had what would look like a stick figure. But today I want that visual to actually become human to you. United Way and all of us hold the future of children in the palm of our hands. So every time we see that visual and those arms reaching down, I want us to be quickly thinking, we get the chance to hold it into the palm of our hand and make a difference. And so what we'll hear this morning is a way that we have three great community leaders guiding us on that journey to how to make a difference. So I'll open with a story and then I'm gonna guide you through who we'll hear from and how we'll manage the panel discussion today. So the story I like to share actually will double down on that thought of that child in the palm of our hand. It has to do with the first grade teacher. How about that being developmentally correct this morning? And the first grade teacher has taught for 40 years and is retiring. All of the children in this particular class that she is retiring with have written her beautiful little notes, almost like thank you and farewell. And they're sitting on a carpet and she is trying to read these notes. They're so beautiful. And of course, they're first grade, so you can imagine what they sound like and look like. About the fourth one in, she starts to tear up and really almost is overcome with emotion. And so she's looking at this one card and says, oh, I just can't read the words. And a little guy, Stephen, who's sitting right beside her, reaches over and touches her arm and says, oh, Mrs. Smith, it's okay. Just sound them out, just like you tell us. Just help us sound them out. That story puts a smile on her face, but also touches our heart. We have the chance to help childhood poverty and early childhood education and development be sounded out in the most productive way so that that child in our hand becomes something that we can tangibly say we've helped. And we've got a great team this morning that's gonna help guide that conversation. Dave and Laura will talk to us. There'll be some great energy around the whole effort of that child in the palm of our hand is very significant and we get a chance to sound it out for him or her. So by way of opening, there's our foundation. And now we're going to share with you how the panel will work. We have three awesome panelists today. We have Mark Simolchik, President and CEO of Stark Community Foundation. He's going to take us through the research and the study. What is real about childhood poverty and the real implication of child development in those first five years? Then we'll have Jeff Talbert, 
the superintendent, who I like to say CEO of the Canton City Schools. And he's gonna share with all of us what he sees or what school districts see in this band or age range. And then Teresa Persis, the retiring president of the Stark Education Partnership will spend time with us on what we can do together. So let's think about the progression. Mark will give us the data and the foundation of information. Jeff will give us what we see, what's going on. And then Teresa will share with us around the ability to contribute. How can we contribute? As they're doing their work today, each will have about 10 minutes. They'll share some of their findings, the conversation. And then if you would have a question, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, not the chat feature. I know we're all used to chat, but move over to the Q&A side. I'll watch those. And when there's a question that pops up, we'll guide that into the right panelists. So again, I could not be more excited to have these three great people with us. And as I shared before, Mark will do the research, Jeff will be what we see, and Teresa will talk to us about how we can help. So in a great way, we'll go a virtual hello to Mark. And Mark, the floor is yours. Glad to have you this morning. Thanks, Mike. Welcome to everyone that's joining us this morning. I'm glad you're here with us. We should have a pretty interesting discussion. So I'm going to try to keep my remarks relatively brief, if I can do that. But I want to uh, begin by helping everyone understand how we have arrived at, at where we are at today with this focus on childhood poverty. The story actually begins uh, back in 2017 with a white paper that Stark Community Foundation presented, uh, which was entitled Strengthening Stark. And at the very beginning of that white paper, in the introduction, there was a very basic premise that we presented, which was Quite simply, facts are our friends. Facts are our friends. Facts are derived from data. Data that illustrates the reality that we face here in Stark County. So that was the basic premise of, of strengthening Stark. So back then in 2017, we looked at the facts of our economic development systems. And the data told us that our community was not progressing quite simply. The data told us that if we kept doing what we were doing, what we had been doing for decades, that we would become smaller, older, and poorer as a community. Quite basically, our economic development system was broken. That was our conclusion. And that economic development system that wasn't working properly resulted in a community that was shrinking in size, it was getting older, and unfortunately, it was getting poorer. So those are the facts that are at the very heart of strengthening Stark. Since we faced up to that reality and followed the data, we have created a collaborative approach to economic development strategy that quite frankly, I don't think we've ever seen before here in our local community. But we also knew that we couldn't stop there. We couldn't stop just by looking at the economic development system. Because if we want a growing, strengthening economy, there's another portion of the equation that is very, very important for a healthy community. Another important part of the equation is the social infrastructure, the social fabric, we like to call it. And so we looked at the data and that data resulted in a Stark County community assessment. To my knowledge, one of the first times that we've looked at a host of economic development, social indicators uh, across the county. And that occurred in 2019. It was a very comprehensive data report. It's available for you to, to view on Stark Community Foundation's website. And as I mentioned, it looked at 50 different indicators of social health. What we saw as a result of that work alarmed us. The common thread throughout all of the data was a high incidence of poverty in our community and in particular, childhood poverty. And so working with United Way of Greater Stark County and the Center for Community Solutions, we created another white paper that was entitled Protecting Stark's Future, a call to coordinate child poverty strategies. The white paper, which was published late last year, late 2020, had a very specific purpose. First, 
we needed to examine the issues underlying the social fabric of Stark County. Second, we needed to articulate the case for a coordinated approach to address this issue of child poverty. And third, we needed to identify specific action steps. In other words, what we did was identify the problem and offer viable solutions to address the problem. In the white paper, there are seven recommendations in all that create a target for a child poverty reduction plan. Now, if you could just envision a picture of a bullseye, and this is included in the white paper. It's a great visual, I think. It has three rings. The outermost ring is addressing immediate needs. First and foremost, we have to address immediate needs, and we have organizations in the community that do just that. The next ring, moving towards the in, inside, is increasing the earnings of families. And I think we'll get into that discussion here later today also. And at the very heart of the bullseye is breaking the cycle of poverty. So imagine that, that visual, if you will, that bullseye, first address immediate needs, second, increase the earnings of families, and third, break the cycle of poverty. Each one of these rings is is discussed in specific sections of that report that I mentioned. The recommendations presented, they, they focus on a collaborative approach to those three stages of the plan that I just mentioned. I don't really wanna go through all of the specifics of, of, those, um, of those sections of the report. I think it's more important that, that you take time to read and, and reread that white paper and think about the recommendations and decide if you as an individual, you as a leader of an organization wanna become part of the solution. That's what we'll be talking about here in a few moments. Now I mentioned the origins of this work really was with strengthening Stark back in 2017. And since that time, as we have created a economic development plan for the community, we believe that there is an economic transformation that's beginning to occur. Jobs are being created, people are being prepared for those jobs and the jobs that are being created are being made more accessible to those that simply don't have and have never had access to jobs. Now, having done that as a basis of our work, we need to turn our attention to this issue of reduction of poverty. In the report, there is a, there's a statement that's made and I'll, I'll mention it today because I think it's, it's very, very important. The statement is to say that poverty is a difficult and complex problem is an understatement. If we could have solved the issue of poverty, we, we would have done that already. It is a complex issue and it's a complex issue that we can solve working together in a very collaborative manner here in Stark County. Now we do see bright spots in economic development as I've mentioned. We also know that we have very capable and very competent people and agencies that are dealing with this issue of childhood poverty and poverty in general. Again, I'm not gonna go into all the data now, but I do urge you to read the white paper and think about what it means to the health and well being of all of us as residents of Stark County. And most important to the youngest residents of Stark County. The white paper also states, and I think, uh, I think we've, we've heard this uh, from the judge earlier in, in earlier discussions. No one chooses to live in poverty. No one chooses to live in poverty. We have the ability and we have the capacity to change the trajectory of poverty here in Stark County. And in particular, as I've mentioned, childhood poverty. We have the ability and capacity to change the conversation around this issue. And once we change the conversation, we'll change the way that we begin to look at the issue. And I think that is at the very heart of what, of what we are attempting to accomplish. We'll begin to change the outcomes through a collaborative and a for focused approach. We need a sustained transformation with sustained efforts. And I know there are people such as yourself, there are organizations across our county that have the ability to sustain this effort. So we as a community have the ability to change the trajectory of childhood poverty. And we're gonna hear more about that with, the, with, the, with Jeff and Teresa. But I challenge each of you to get involved. 
we can each make a very vital difference as we move forward. And that difference will ultimately get at the heart of that bullseye and break, break the cycle of poverty. So you might say in, in conclusion, you might say, or you might ask the question, so what is Star Community Foundation doing about this? Well, we as a community foundation are beginning to offer financial support for what we are identifying as both planning and implementation grants. Those grants are being offered to organizations across Stark County that are focused on childhood poverty. And again, I mentioned there are numerous organizations, but the important part is that we are providing financial support to these organizations only when they can illustrate to us that they are collaborating with like-minded organizations to address this issue of childhood poverty. In June of this year, in a special board meeting, we provided the first round of grants to begin focusing on this issue. A total of $430,000 were awarded to a number of different agencies that are taking a very collaborative approach at the neighborhood level to begin to address this issue of childhood poverty. So the journey is only beginning. It's, it's in its very early stages, but I think we're already beginning to make progress. And I'm very much looking forward to the Q&A portion of, of, this, uh, of this morning so that we can address some of your questions in, in greater detail. With that, Mike, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Mark. And I appreciated how you teed up the audience to have the opportunity to listen and reflect and then use the Q&A as something bumps into them. Mark, as I transition into Jeff and Teresa, a thought came to my mind and maybe you can help with that thought that may then move into a question that someone might ask. When you were talking about strengthening Stark and then the uh, protecting Stark's future, so that data gives you a good spot to really stand and peer at the horizon line. You went to a really cool spot that said changing the conversation and then using planning and implementation granting to help that. I love where the conversation bumps into support. What are a couple conversation points? If we're changing that conversation, what might the audience say? What are conversation points I should listen for if I wanna get involved and be helpful? I think one of the most important conversation points, and, and you could call it a conversation point or, or simply a different way of looking at an issue. And we learned this um, actually with another white paper that we, we issued a number of years ago on the future of food security in Stark County. And what we what we learned as a result of that work, and again with Strengthening Stark, and I'm certain we will see it again here with Protecting Stark's Future, is that as, as organizations begin to come together to collaborate. First, I should mention, Mike, that we've, we, have, we have a whole host of, of really amazing organizations here in Stark County that, that are well respected across the region, across the state, even across the, the country. But what we've discovered as we've begun working with these organizations is that they tend to be working in silos. But when they, when they come together and begin to talk about what they are doing and how they are addressing issues, that's when, that's when the, the, the conversation begins to change. They begin to look at an issue from a different lens and using those using all that vast experience and sharing those ideas and thoughts and experiences, it truly changes the conversation. You begin to look at an issue from a different lens. And that was really the, that was what has allowed us to have such success with, with the issue of food security in Stark County, once again with strengthening Stark. And I'm absolutely convinced that it will happen once again with protecting Stark's future. Mark, that's awesome. And thank you for building that bridge between conversation and then what folks can do collaboratively. You can reflect, but then step in with your skills and talents or resources and say, with that data, I can get in here and become helpful. So back to that hand with that child, there's that way for that company to say, here's how I can get underneath that child or that issue and lift it up. And I appreciate where you take folks because that's how we can use today to become helpful to what this whole campaign will generate. 
So thank you for that, Mark. And as we move from Mark into that found from the foundational level of conversation, collaboration, you might say, okay, that's great, but what's it really look like boots on the ground? Or what's it really look like in our largest school district, which would be Canton City Schools? And that allows us to move into Jeff Talbert's segment to talk about, Jeff, what are we seeing? You know, you've got that support around us. Mark did a beautiful job of talking about that. So let's marry it up or connect it to, here's the reality. Here's where the support really connects to what we see in our school district. So Jeff, you can just take us on a little journey around that early childhood development and that concept of what you see in the Canton City Schools and probably have heard from your teammates in superintendency across the county. Thanks, Mike. I, I'm, I'm gonna enjoy the opportunity to kind of walk you through this. Um, I've had the opportunity in my career as an educator to work in multiple school districts around Stark County. So I've had, to, I've had a chance to see how this plays out um, and, and in an urban setting, in a suburban setting, um, and also in a rural in a rural setting. And, and as the report shows, we have 47% of our students in Stark County living in poverty. Um, and in Canton, that number gets as high as 57%. So it is a real factor, and it is something that we have to pay attention to as as educators. And, and without the support of the community, the effects um, of of poverty. Um, will we'll play a role in our students' lives well into their, well into adult, adulthood. Um, so what, what we know is that students growing up in, in, in poverty spend more time in their early years focusing on survival. So they are really focused on how do I stay alive in this world more than they are about exploring their world and learning about their world. And so that sends them into preschool um, years behind. Um, the, the data shows that kids living in poverty hear 30 million fewer words by the time they reach the age of three. So when, when we get them and we start to get them into our preschools and we're getting earlier and earlier, we now start to see three and four-year-olds and our three-year-olds in our preschools. Um, we have to kind of start from the beginning with them. Um, we're teaching them how to interact with their peers, how to interact with adults, how to communicate and to tell us when they need something um, along with, with reading. We, we also know that in, in those earlier years, those students tend to start school late. Um, some of them are, are, because their families are in survival mode, they're, they're, their parents are working multiple jobs and trying to make sure that they, they can provide food and they can have a, a roof over their, their family's head, that sometimes the students are less engaged with, with adults. Um, and, and, and so that adds to um, the things that, that, they're, that they're lacking. We also know that they have um, less access to healthcare um, which also allows there, for there to be chronic issues that will keep them out of school um, once we, we get them in school. So fast forward that to we're out of preschool and now we're into early elementary years. Um, our students, you know, are they've come to us behind um, from the start. And, and we know that if we don't catch those kids up, start to close that achievement gap by the time they reach third grade, that the chances of them graduating on time are drastically reduced. Um, and so now we're starting to talk about students who aren't earning credits, um, who are not engaged in school um, in the middle school years for a variety of reasons. One, again, attendance issues. Two, they're, they're, they are, they're transient. So because their, their home life or their shelter is not stable, um, they could be in a home that's theirs on a Monday and Friday, um, be, be living in another home um, on, on a couch um, with a family member in a different city in a different state. And, and not having that stability affects their ability to, to make relationships, to form relationships at schools, to be a part of after school programming, to explore hobbies. And then that connection plays a role in their achievement level. And so when we have kids who aren't connected, um, they're not achieving at high levels, they begin to fall further behind. Um, and, and then when you reach the, the ninth grade, if you aren't starting to earn high school credits, the chances of you graduating 
um, on time and graduating at all are now greatly reduced. And we know that in, in our society where more and more jobs are requiring um, either a college diploma or some type of certificate or licensure in order for you to do that job, not being able to make your way through high school has a dramatic effect on, on the child, but also the future of, for them and their families and the future of, of our communities. What we try to do as a school district is try to wrap our hands around all these students, try to address as many of these needs as we possibly can. Um, we provide breakfast, we provide lunch. Now we're starting to provide dinner. Um, in this, uh, this COVID, new COVID environment, not only are we providing those meals at home, but we're giving families the opportunity to come take some meals home with them over the weekend. Um, when families can't get to us, we're delivering meals. Um, we, we've created clothing closets for, for our families so that the students have an, act, an opportunity to get the clothes that they need if they don't have them. We're putting washer and dryer facilities in our school buildings so that the kids have an opportunity to have their clothes washed and their clothes are clean. Again, and our job is to remove as many barriers as we can to make sure that the kids are in school receiving the education that they're going to need in order to be successful. Um, we've provided mental health services in our schools. We know that students living in poverty have these chronic stressors in their lives, you know, worrying about whether or not I'm going to get my next bill, worrying about whether or not I'm going to have my house, dealing with parents who are really stressed out as well because they're trying to be providers for their students. Um, like Mark said, no one wants to live in poverty. So we have a lot of families who are doing everything they can to make sure that they're able to provide. And that, that causes stress. And, and so we have um, multiple, multiple uh, mental health providers inside of our schools who are there to kind of support our families through that. And then we're also working with community partners to make sure that our families have housing. And, and when our families um, have to move, um, we do everything we can to, to, to find out where they are, to get them to and from school. Even if they move to another district, we are working with them to get to allow them to come back to us and to stay with us so that they, their school environment can be that place of stability. Um, it, 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 is, it is definitely a challenge. It's a challenge that I know that our staff in the Kansas City School District is, is up to in supporting our families because we know just how important it is for students to have a high quality education if we are going to break the, the cycle of poverty in this community. Jeff, what a beautiful job in that short window of time of painting the picture. 57% of your students live in, in a poverty-like condition. So over half, and yet we're all looking at achievement levels and production around being a good employee, you know, a good parent, to your point about breaking the cycle. And what you described in that short segment is the power. Mark's statistics are then brought to life with what you see and what your staff sees every single day. And you did a beautiful job of taking us through things like health barriers, engagement, 30 million less words, just because they're not engaged with literacy at an early piece. Perhaps, Jeff, you could say with all the things that you're doing and all of them very important, have you found that a couple of them, if done really, really well, are great starters? Yeah. Knowing that you're going to do them all or at some point, is there like two or three you say, you know, if we hit these couple, we, we think we can stand on good ground and get the others in. Yeah, I, I think the, the key is early on engaging with the families and letting them know, hey, here are all the resources that are out there that can help you support um, your family in these. We know that adversity will hit, but when adversity hits, here's what you can do. You can call us and then we will point you in, in, in the right directions. And if we're able to do that, if we're able to get that connection, that engagement early on with the families, then when, when they do um, get into a valley, they understand how to navigate it. Um, and then we'll, we'll take care of the, re re the rest. You know, we, it, it, this year and in, and in the last few years in the Kansas City School District, we've added new school supplies. And we say that the school supplies that everybody needs in order to help our families navigate this world um, is patience, flexibility, and grace. And so that's that's what we, we try to do. And if we can get those families to understand that we are here for you, we're going to support you no matter what it is, you can call us um, and point them in the right direction. Um, I think that those are the most important things for us right now, Mike. Jeff, thank you for that 
I call it a cool closing statement or a summary, because what's going on there is if you can get family engagement through, through programming, then it opens the door to allow those others literally and figuratively to come into the family. And so I thank you for that, because that gets all of us around how our support or where, where Teresa will talk in a moment here about collaboration and how we can look to do that. If we know we can open that door, you know, with patience and grace and certainly flexibility, those great words, now we've got a chance. We can turn the data. So beautiful job of sharing the reality. And I know all of us can see that movie behind our eyes that you just described. And you've seen it from different district levels, small, large, urban, rural. So your synthesis of all of that really helps us stay on point. So Jeff, thank you for that. And as we segue to Teresa, speaking about being on point, Mark gave us the data. Jeff just spoke of, I call it high truth, high grace that just happened there. Teresa will talk to us a little bit about, so what can we do together? And Teresa, before you jump in, it gives me a chance really to brag on you with the, all the work that you've done through schools as a superintendent, certainly with Stark Education Partnership, your leadership generally has really been a gift to us. So as you transition and Dr. John Richard comes into play, thank you. And we know that you'll still be right with us, helping us collaborate. So with that, I'll just build the bridge to collaboration. And Teresa, take us on that journey of you know, what we might be able to do together. Thanks, Mike. Um, so thanks to the financial commitment of our community, our United Way of Greater Stark County has been working diligently with our community partners to tackle the impact of poverty on our families. And, and this morning, I wanna highlight three United Way partner programs. So first, um, as, as Superintendent Talbert has shared, starting early makes a big difference. And so I wanna highlight uh, the Stark County Thrive Project first. Um, so Thrive is a project through Kansas City Public Health that works to reduce overall infant mortality rate, as well as disparity in birth outcomes relative to black and white in, in, infants. Um, the Thrive Project employs community health workers sort of stand in the gap with women during pregnancy until the baby is a year old. Those community health workers assist and support moms with things like safe sleep education, housing, transportation, health insurance, employment, and so much more. Um, the Star County Thrive Program is funded in part by a, a lot of different grants but also is supported by our United Way of Greater Stark County. And the results in their data shows that um, Thrive has reduced Stark's infant mortality rate and improved the disparity in birth outcomes relative to black and white infants. Um, next, I wanna talk about school readiness. And, and again, as Jeff has shared, it's critically important that we continue to work together in our community to provide children with opportunities and resources to develop the skills they need to be ready for school. Um, strengthening our early learning programs and equipping and supporting parents has been successful in positively impacting student outcomes. Our United Way has been a faithful funder of high quality early education programs, including a parent engagement program called SPARK, supporting partnerships to assure ready kids. So SPARK, is a family-focused intervention program that helps children get ready for school by building reading, language, math, social skills, and seeks to create this seamless transition uh, between school and home for children ages three to six. So the way this works is uh, once or twice a month, a Spark family meets with an assigned home visitor called a parent partner. And our parent partners provide books and other resources, and then uses those to help parents engage the child in a lesson that was developed around state standards and is designed to provide a school readiness advantage. You know, SPARK is a highly effective kindergarten readiness program that works collaboratively with schools and families and the community and works in partnership with high quality preschool programs. So some of the results in, uh, in some of their recent data that they shared with me, uh, uh, looking at 500 Spark children, um, Spark children significantly improved in their performance on both math and reading when we looked at their pre and their post assessments. And having kids ready for school 
you know, puts them on good fitting on, on good footing so that when they're they're readier, they have a, a much better chance to be ready for third grade reading achievement and to be then ready um, to move all through their K-12 experiences. Um, the third program I'd like to talk to you about um, is our care team program out of the Stark Educational Service Center. You know, one of the common threads you're going to hear through all of this is that we have people working from the program standing in the gap with our children and families. And this care team program is, is very similar to that. So um, care teams are school-based, holistic approaches to provide personalized, just-in-time support for our students and families. Um, our care teams are comprised of teachers, administrators, school counselors, family support specialists, and staff from multiple community and social service agencies who work with students and their families to address challenges facing students and their families. And it could be anything from academics, attendance, mental or physical health, and a wide variety of other issues that the families are facing. Um, thanks to the community investment in the United Way, we have strong countywide care team leadership and family support specialist network offering training and support for one another. All 22 uh, districts, school districts that are affiliated with the Stark County Educational Service Center have at least one family support specialist who serves as that liaison between students and families, school personnel and community agencies. And they provide that outreach and connection. Our family support specialists are uniquely positioned to, su to support families. They have this trusted relationship and they connect families to resources like food, clothing, community agency referral, homelessness linkage and referral, holiday assistance, hygiene and health, mentoring, and many other resources. And as we look at the results, you know, during this pandemic year, our family support specialists were critically important to families. The data revealed that our family support specialists supported 45,790 requests from students and families for needs. And that's up from 36,687 from just the previous year. Now our, our care team data, it, you know, there's, there's a lot of data that's collected, but when that, those interventions are provided, the data shows that student promotions are increased from one grade to the next, graduation rates increased. You know, all of those important indicators of ac academics, attendance, behavior are all improved with that strong collaborative team approach. So again, thanks to the community investment in our United Way of Greater Stark County and their partners, our children, youth, and adults have improved health and education outcomes. Teresa, thank you. And I know you could have gone on as each of the three panelists could have just unbundled these key components in their presentations. So I thank you guys for managing that into a good way for our folks to get their head around it. Teresa, one question for you, because of the Stark Education Partnership, you had a chance mm -hmm. to see different ways that pre-K to 16 could certainly mm -hmm. be impacted, but staying in our early childhood range, would you say that the care team opportunity really opens the door to many of the other programs that you shared, you know, like Thrive or even Spark, you know, just those yeah. particular ones that are so good. Is the care team a, a good conduit to open the door to families? Kind of like Jeff had shared, if we can just get in the right way. Uh, you're absolutely right. Mike, and I would say one of the exciting new projects that I didn't have a chance to share about is um, this um, Star Community Foundation just funded the opportunity um, to start a care team in preschool and the pilot will be in alliance and, and the Stark Education Partnership is will be the evaluator for that project and we're so excited because we believe that there's a lot of great things happening in early education so compliments to everybody working in that space, but when we work together, as Mark mentioned. Um, we're, we're, you know, synergistically, we see the data improving. So that they've already started, uh, I know, Alliance City Schools and their um, Alliance Early Learning Center, their SPARK program, Mount Union, they're all involved. Um, I know Raymond Johnson's, you know, Family Empowerment Center is involved. So there'll be strong parent engagement. There's, you know, education because superintendents get it, that we can't wait till they enter the schoolhouse door, that it has to start, you know, prenatal, 
So that you know, prenatal up, and when we when we use all of our community resources wrapping around families, and again, making sure they have stable housing, you know, they need food security, all of those things matter because then we have an opportunity um, to educate them at their highest level so that they can reach their potential. Because all of our kids have potential that only God gave them, and we need to so that we allow them, put them in their best position to impact the community with their gifts. It's a beautiful summary because many times folks will hear the details, but they'll say, what's the synergy? Yeah. What's, what's the power move, so to speak, that if I'm a contributor and I've got United Way really ready to go poised in this, do they see their dollars landing in these spots? And that's what made all three of you so great today. When you talk about the impact of what United Way and its campaign can do, you three actually painted a picture and framed it for early childhood education and breaking the cycle of poverty. You know, Teresa, when you talk a little bit about wrapping around that family and just talk about just getting into the family, you know, knocking on that door and getting in. And Mark talked a great deal about changing that conversation and then making sure our dollars find its way. It's basically like the great thread that's pulling all the eyelets together to say this campaign has the opportunity for impact. And when you take a look at that hand with that child in it, back to that visual, you guys did a beautiful job of saying, that's how we can do this. And it's real. It's real what we do. And when we want to help them sound it out, back to that earlier story, here's the way to do it. Here's the way to do it. So I'll pause here. I see in the Q&A, we'll just take a couple minutes, see if there are any questions for the panelists. And I see there's one question. This is where I might have our folks. I didn't see it pop up. Let me see. All right, here's the question it's from an anonymous attendee. The Shipley Child Health Clinic is right here in Canton serving these populations of children. We provide comprehensive health care to children birth to 18, while well child, physicals, immunization, et cetera. We partner with Thrive and have community health. How can I get connected with others in the community to be included in discussions around the specific topic? And how can we help more here at Shipley? So the question, and any panelists can jump in thinking Shipley Child Health Clinic, how can they get connected to be helpful to what you all just talked about? Well, Mike, I can jump in right away. I would love to have them join us. We have a great start for Great Futures Coalition where we bring together everyone who works in any way, whether it's the medical profession or education or health or all together um, to work around prenatal to kindergarten readiness. Uh, we meet once a month. I'm happy to, you know, we'll give my number or my email. They can contact the Early Childhood Res um, Resource Center um, and talk to Scott Hosselman, who co-chairs that committee with, with myself. Um, and we're happy to have them have their voice to help shape, again, what we do and the way we work together. And I think, again, as we, and we have, we have, they have been great about giving us some flyers to get it into some of our food banks. So they have, they, you know, they, I know, we know that they're really important in our community, but you're right. Um, it's, it's important that we try to find new ways and to engage everybody. Yeah, Teresa, that was a great question and a really perfect segue to you to say there's collaboration. So if I'm not sure how, who do I connect with? And I would just share with folks who are in, we have over a hundred folks on the screen today. You have three of the best resources in front of you, three of the best. So if you think of nothing else, think I'll reach out to one of these three with a way to collaborate or a way my agency might connect or a way my company might connect. So thank you, Teresa. And that's a great question from the, the Shipley Center, the early, the clinic side of Shipley. Hey, Mike, Mike, could I jump in here also Please. and just add a thought? Uh, one of the one of the most important roles that the community foundation fulfills in the community is to get, convene organizations to bring them together and we are we're in a really unique position that we we see so much of what's going on across Stark County and any organization that is interested in getting engaged in this effort I would suggest that go to our website um, there is a there's a um, a, a means there to contact us by email. Send me an email, send an email to Amy Krebs, who's our vice president of, of grant making here. 
or just send it to the general account, we'll receive a copy of it. But if you'd like to come in and begin the discussion with us, many times what we, what we see is organizations will contact us and say, hey, we've got this idea, or we're thinking about doing this. Is anybody else doing this in the community? And we invite them to come in and, and, and spend some time with us, and then we can share with them some of the experiences that we've had and our knowledge of other organizations in the community. So we would welcome um, anyone contacting us. Thank you, Mark. And, and that is really neat because sometimes folks just don't know, and you have a chance to see in the broadest way how they might connect. So great right. resource connecting to their want to. Thank you for that. And again, you know, the uh, using Teresa's education partnership and then certainly the community foundation. Well, as I take a look at the Q and A, it seems like we're still great. And I know that we're keeping time correctly. So I think we're being very helpful to the gift of your time over a hundred of you with us today. I'll just close before I give it over to Judge Howard. Over my shoulder, you see this little thing. It says, you matter, it's on the screen. And I'll have fun to say, you do matter in this campaign. We all have something that we can give. Could be financial, certainly our, our companies can get involved in a larger way. But let's use this morning to motivate and energize that thoughtfulness around how do I collaborate to help students that Jeff described in a way that Mark says the data will produce. If we do that, we've got a chance and we get a chance to really kick it off and make a difference. So thank you for group. Mark, Jeff, Teresa will give you that cyber clap. Those folks that are out there, I'm sure they're giving you a standing ovation right now like they would have in person. And as I do that, I give you my applause and I turn it back over to Judge Howard. Thanks again, panelists. Well, I would like to join in thanking Teresa, Mike, Jeff, and Mark. Uh, it was very insightful and it was very motivating. We appreciate the time that you've spent with us here today. And we also thank you for the incredible work that you are doing in our community to improve the lives of children and families. Over the years, I have worked closely with all of you, and I know how dedicated you all are to this work. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, today marks the beginning of United Way's 2021 fundraising campaign. United Way of Greater Stark County is committed to finding long-term solutions to social issues such as child poverty. With your help, those solutions are within our reach. Let's take a look at a video now that offers further perspective on this. When you grow up in poverty, planning for the future is a luxury. When resources are limited, the focus is on just getting by, knowing that missing one paycheck can have life altering consequences. My name is Richie Harper and I work in the Star County Prosecutor's Office. I grew up here in Canton, Ohio, and I grew up in poverty. I understand these issues and how it affects our community, especially our children. So many of our children are going without basic needs such as food, clothing, and housing. We face a growing crisis in every part of our community. I think it's very important to break the cycle of childhood poverty. The sooner we can address a problem, the more effective it'll be. The report that I've just read was protecting Stark's future, and it references the condition of Stark County, and specifically childhood poverty. The Childhood Poverty Report was commissioned and started in 2019, so it was pre-COVID. Um, the results, uh, even pre-COVID, were alarming. In the city of Canton, about half of the children live in poverty. And for a city its size, that place is Canton tied for second place in the country with the worst child poverty rate. I think some of the things people thought that were occurring only in Canton are occurring throughout our whole county. For example, there's 20,000 children living under the poverty line in Stark County. 47% of those are outside of the city of Canton. So poverty affects all of us. It's our responsibility as a community to help the children in this community that by no choice of their own are living in poverty. So at United Way, we're doing two things. We are meeting immediate needs and we are giving families the opportunity to increase their earnings and their stability. Growing up in poverty is linked to a host of negative economic, health, and social conditions. Children who grow up in poverty suffer from more behavioral and social problems, more health issues, and lower academic achievement. 
The one item in the report that really stood out to me is that there was a difference of 16.2 years life expectancy from an individual that was raised in Southeast Canton to one that was raised in the center of North Canton. What can we do to lift those individuals up that on no fault of their own were raised in the community with a lesser life expectancy? One of my favorite programs that United Way supports is the CARE team and it's a wraparound service for children in schools and they try to look at the child holistically and try to meet all of their needs. Some of these children have things going on at home that distract them from their learning and they try to address the needs of, of those children. And I can't imagine the obstacles these children have in maturing and growing and being healthy if they don't have these basic needs. The road to becoming a successful adult starts in childhood. By ensuring that children have access to food, education, and stable housing, we can ensure that they're well on their way to becoming successful members of society. There are misconceptions and stigma about poverty. People believe that if someone can't afford their basic needs, they must be lazy and not working hard enough. That is not necessarily true, especially for single parents. Many of them are working multiple jobs and still can't earn enough to pay basic needs like housing, utilities, childcare, and healthcare. As a business owner, I would like to speak to the other business owners. The number one thing we can do to make a difference is provide a living wage. A livable wage will create opportunities for families and their children. A young child given an opportunity will blossom and a very productive adult. And that is ultimately what our responsibility is, to provide a better community, and we do that by making strong families and individuals within the family. I often hear people say, why don't they just pull themselves up by their bootstraps? Children do not have bootstraps. They can't pull themselves up. It is up to us, the adults in the community, to provide them with a bridge to their future. Together, we have the power to end childhood poverty. By donating to the United Way of Greater Star County, a stronger community is within our reach. I think United Way is the most efficient way that we can help those in our community. When they make a decision to give to an organization, they've looked at the holistic big picture and they've made that decision for a reason. It was well thought out and they care about making the biggest impact with the dollars that are given to United Way. We all have things that we can contribute. No one person can say that I cannot contribute something. We all can contribute. We can all be a mentor. We can provide financial uh, assistance or maybe just look around and get involved. And I think too many people tend not to get involved because they don't think that they make a difference. It's shocking how people working together can change the world. And I think we have an opportunity in Stark County to do that. As you saw in the video, Dave and Laura Grabowski are our campaign chairs for this year. And it's now my privilege to introduce them. Well, I just want to say, uh, Judge Howard and panelists, uh, it's an honor to be involved with the United Way. And every year when September comes around, I think of two things, uh, two of my favorite things, football and United Way. And now we're going uh, today, this will be the kickoff for United Way. And United Way is a very, very important organization. And I can speak as a community member my whole life uh, I've looked at United Way as uh, being at the forefront of charitable giving. And I think charitable giving is what determines the type of society we have or community that we live in. Uh, we can discuss programming and funding all we want, but without this campaign, none of it can occur, or at least it can occur on a limited basis. It's very important that we are able to set goals and meet goals and help people. The 2020, the 2021 United Way campaign will only be successful as the volunteers, as we make our pledges, and more importantly, ask others to pledge to help 
those in our community. This is the morning we kick off United Way 2021 Star County campaign. Now, we don't know how the campaign's gonna end up, but there are a few things we do know at this point. Number one, much of the staff and many volunteers have been involved for months behind the scenes, talking to individuals and gearing up for this day and through the duration of the campaign. I don't think people realize how many people put so much effort in before this campaign to make this hopefully a successful campaign. There's a lot of preparation. We've already made 60 CEO calls and the initial discussions I think are somewhat promising. Early workplace campaigns have either started or will, will be starting. And again, we feel that those will be promising this year. Many of the large companies in the area have been responsive to stepping up. And of course their commitments have not been fulfilled yet, but they are implying that they think they can meet some of the requirements uh, that they feel they can meet for the campaign. Uh, United Way does the best it can to keep up with technology. And a good example is the E-Pledge, something that's relatively new and will resonate with a certain segment of our uh, community. And also we'll get money in a quick and easy fashion into uh, United Way. Uh, we're showing promising results in sponsorships and grants. One thing, there are some headwinds though. It all sounds good, but there are always headwinds. Uh, there are many companies still suffering. Many cases, uh, in many cases, some companies as we know are not open or partially open. Uh, they can't get the proper staffing. Some companies have changed their priorities and are unable to what they've given in the past. Last year's campaign benefited from a large amount of COVID related money. This year, it appears right now at least, that money will not be accessible. So we'll have to find a way to bridge that gap. I encourage and want to let you, everyone know that we need to execute. Face-to-face -face and personal contact, if possible, is always the best way to, to meet. And always, always the belief in the United Way and the principles behind it will be the most important thing that we have to motivate ourselves and hopefully meet the campaign goal. We do have some good news regarding the campaign. Uh, we've already raised about a million dollars and um, early campaigns are trending up. Uh, we hope that this is going to be a momentum that is sustainable and we can keep up the excitement and the enthusiasm for, um, for you know, getting this done. <laughs> so I know we can't do this with, you know, and support the programs and some of them, which I love are care team, prosperity at work, 211, uh, we, need to, we need to support these programs. And this is such an important uh, time in our community. Um, a lot of thought was put into setting this year's goal. It's ambitious, but it's achievable. And our goal is 5,920,000. And we have now until December 9th to get this money raised. So uh, please make this campaign a priority. September is United Way month and the best time to make your, your calls, your gifts. Um, and we need to get these in sooner than later. Uh, we can make a difference together. We can make a difference working united. I just wanna add that our goal is 5,920,000. That is uh, almost identical to what last year's goal is. We felt in some respects it could be a stretch, but we feel on the other hand, we can meet this goal. This is important. I think we can do it if we all pull together. And most importantly, I just wanna appreciate, show my appreciation to everybody that's out there for all the time and effort they spend. Giving your time is probably the greatest gift you can give to somebody. And taking the time to look, uh, to see what we can get for United Way is important. Uh, I mentioned earlier, September is a good kickoff time for football. It's also a good, a good time to start our uh, asking for contributions. I think September is a great month. I would rather see people, if possible, to see what we can do to get uh, United Way kicked off this September and to do what we can to expedite that. I want to thank everybody that's out there, for both Laura and I. Thank you. Thank you, Dave and Laura. 
If you, our audience members, have been motivated by our panel discussion and wish to donate today, you can text within reach to 41444, or you can use the link in the chat. So it's texting within reach to 41444 or the link in the chat. With your support, we can achieve this campaign goal and continue to fund programs that will move us forward in our quest to end child poverty in our community. Thank you for attending today. Thank you for your generous support and thank you for living united. Stay safe.